Oh, me hearties, a very good evening to you. It is me, Scotty McClue, First Lord of the Internet, World Stop Broadcaster, and we are live streaming live on Facebook just for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've just joined us, of course, Sunday night, nothing gets past me. This promises to be a very, very big one. Now, you've been seeing quite a lot of me recently. I hope you don't mind, but uh, I quite like to attempt to keep the spirits up at 10 o'clock sharp on a weekday morning. And then, of course, Sunday night, 8 o'clock, we've agreed that's the best time, and it seems to be a general agreement, so welcome. Uh, hello, Scotty. Hello, Scott McClure, says Kareem. Hello, this is Morris McCardell. Annette Kirkwood, lovely to have you with us. Excellent stuff. Stephen Menzies is watching. Lovely to have you with us, Stephen. Thanks for all your back and forward. Excellent stuff. I hope you liked the, uh, the story of Scotland. It's 50 years old, that recording. <laughs> How amazing is that? Uh, David Turner, welcome, Ian Kerr, lovely to have you with us, Dinky Do It, Scotty McClure, Gordon Roberts has joined us, how wonderful. I have to go soon to the shops, I'll be back, mate. Yes, you bet, uh, you take care and lots of social distancing, Morris, look after yourself, bud, and uh, get us something nice at the shop, Story Mac. Dinky Do, good evening, Scotty. Hope you're well, says the wonderful Stephen Menzies. I am, Stephen. Are you still uh, working on major product projects, keeping the country safe? Um, so there we are. Good evening, Dinky Do, my good man. Brian Hall, my good man. Dinky Do to you. Lovely to have you with us and welcome. And uh, who else have we got? Folks, I've shared, so get sharing. Excellent. Yes, tell everybody it's on. Good idea, Kareem. Thank you. What I'll do, I'll get the sharing on the go tonight. And as I say, I raised the device up to save all this looking down stuff that I've had to do from time to time. But the watch should go round that McClue's live. Evening, Scotty. You can never have too much of McClue. Tony Mac, you say the nicest things. You're a very, very kind man. And uh, there we are. Uh, Denise D. Nelson, dinky do good day, Scotty. Hope oh, things are getting better over there. Denise D. Nelson, lovely to have you with us. We're doing our best and we're keeping each other cheerful, which is what it's about. And uh, somebody said, is your program all about discussions? I said, do you know, we've barely mentioned the, the, the C word. So there you are. Yes, coronavirus. Oh. So there we are. And Dana Johnson, Dinky Doo, Mike McCabe, Stuart Walker, Carol Morris. Evening, Dinky Doo, Scotty. Gareth Collins, lovely to have you with us. And a big Dinky Doo to you from me, Scotty McClue. Spread the word, guys. Share, say McClue's on. That's what we'll say. We'll just say McClue's on. I'm going to share now to uh, the big page, the big Scotty McClue page, and we'll just say McClue's on. That's the best thing. Carl Morris is watching. Speak soon, buddy, says Morris. We will, Morris. Take care of yourself down at the shops. Guys, remember the shops, not that we're all dashing off, but the shops do take longer than they used to because you have to queue outside now with a good distance between you. So there we are. Uh, I hope you're all coping. Carl says, good evening, Scotty. I hope you and the family are all good at this very testing time. And boy, is it a testing time, I tell you. But can I say to you, we've been joined by about 40,000 of you in the mornings. Thank you for that. Fantastic. So there you are. Very, very good. Kathleen Delaney is watching. Dinky do, Kathleen. Just going to share now, guys. Very quick share, if that's okay with you. And if you can all do the same, because it's all in the sharing. You can have the finest show in the world, and I would argue this is. But um, if everybody doesn't know about it, what's point? As we used to say in Yorkshire, a Lancashire. What's point? Uh, what's world coming to? You know, that sort of thing. And it's true. Um, so there we are. So it all depends on you. But it is our stream. So there we are. I am but a catalyst who pops up to say hi. And that's what it should be all about. Excellent stuff. Now, this is telling me it's saying sharing on the timeline. We don't want to share on the timeline at the moment. We want to share in our group. 
I'm going to um, work very, very hard when all this is over and get myself some pennies to buy a nice, fast computer. Catherine Delaney is watching. Dinky do, Catherine. Lovely to have you with us. John Robertson's watching. Gary Murphy. Mike McCabe says, not been having a dinky do day today. Spent today looking to buy a hot tub with no luck. Now, hot tubs are very strange because they've got a pH balance, haven't they? And somebody, your wife can get in and upset the pH balance. And that's it. And everybody has to get out. Is that right? What happens if the pH balance is upset in the hot tub? Would you not be better just running a wee bath and pop into that? That's what I do. I don't have a hot tub. So there you are. A tub used to be something... Um, a great big wooden tub that you had in the wash house for your once a week bath or the wee tin bath at the fire uh, in the two up two doon. That sort of stuff now. Uh, share to the story. So we're sharing to the story. I'll share to the story first. Let everybody know, guys. Very important. My goodness, 50 years. Love the history of Scotland. But I do find all the shipbuilding and your stories of the Clyde interesting. Stephen Menzies. I haven't even scratched the surface. I could write book after book after book. I find so many interesting things out about the Clyde. And I can't believe that I've actually been part of it. I was on the boats, just doing my little bit, my cabin boy, helping with the steering. I got to do that, helping out, uh, you know, uh, painting the boats and what have you. But it was great for an introduction to public service. So there you are, because, of course, we carried so many passengers. Uh, so there we are. Dinky do. I had an uncle who was seven times he circumnavigated the world and was in the water in two world wars. He uh, brought down a spotter plane with his rifle. I think he got the tank. Um, you know, he had a conversation with a German submarine captain who surfaced and said, we want your code books. He said, well, they're in the boiler. You can forget that. And uh, that was it. And it was very gentlemanly. The exchange, this was the first World War. And I remember my aunt saying, well, you see, the boys were in the water during the war a lot. Convoy's been blown away from below them. One uncle took a ship in in two halves. Andy Ray, good evening, Scotty Dinky Doo. Hello, Andy. Lovely to have you with us and welcome, welcome. Thank you for being my friend, I say. The wonderful John Boyle. Dinky do, John. Great to have you with us. So there we are. Uh, Kenny Hyde's watching. What a terrific guy. What Kenny doesn't know about cars is not worth knowing. Tremendous stuff. Welcome, Kenny. Lovely to have you with us. Quality chat. Joe McKee, Tony Richardson. True Scotty, we're still staying over here in the USA. Prayers for all and prayers for you in the USA, Denise D. Nelson. Hands across the sea, I say. Uh, when this is all over, I think I'll maybe go and try my luck on talk shows in America. You're back at the right time, Scotty, says John Bow. We do our best, John. We like to look after you. Right. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm sharing this to um, the big Scotty McClue page. Right. So, guys, you all need to help out as well. I can't do it all myself. Um, you know, I am my own producer. Uh, Gordon Robertson, Scotty, an opinion, please. Do you think uh, suiciders through the likes of Shollins are suiciders are proper Glaswegians, or do you think they're more like Edinburgh folk? So you're saying that you feel for some reason the south side of Glasgow are more aligned with Edinburgh than Glasgow. Very interesting, you see. I um, was part of a radio station called L107, and sadly we lost the station through to poor stewardship, and uh, and I lost a lot of my, my life savings. Anyway, that's by the by. No point in crying over spilt milk, as they say. But um, you know, you've got to you've got to pick up your life and get on with it. Now, the radio station was for Lanarkshire. Now, it took in Glasgow because Glasgow is Lanarkshire. 
Very interesting. So the Glasgow address is Lanarkshire. Fantastic. There we are. Uh, I shall put that to the nation. Gordon Robertson's asking, if you stay on the south side of Glasgow, are you more aligned with Edinburgh than Glasgow? I thought you'd be more aligned with Ayr. Uh, Nikki Graham, Dinky Do Scotty. So there we are. Dinky Do Nikki, lovely to have you with us. Thank you for all your support and your sharing. Very, very much appreciated. Top lady. Top lady. Um, Alistair King, the wonderful Alistair King, our resident engineer, is watching. Top, top engineer, Dinky Do Scotty. Hello, Alistair. Glad you could join us. Fee Fife. Fee Fife. Again, okay. uh, Scott Martyr, Scott Martyr, sorry. He says, sorry, oh, Scott, what are you sorry for? Craig Cameron's watching Dinky Doo, Thomas Hamilton. John Jones says Dinky Doo. Andrew Wishmaster Williams, hello, Scotty. Michael, oh, sorry, not Michael, Michelle, Michelle Ponting, top lady. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to have you with us. So glad you could all join me. Sharing, guys, sharing, sharing, um, share on a page. Now, this is going out to the big Scotty McClue page. I hope you've all clicked like on that page because we're heading for 6,000 of you on the one page. And I've got five pages. So there we are. And uh, I'll just put... Um, join us. So there we are. Join us. And uh, not join us because we're falling apart. You understand. So there we go. Right. Stephen Phillips. Lovely to have you with us. Scott O'Hare. Jack Dinky Doo. Scotty Dinky Doo. Jack. Lovely to have you with us. Fantastic. Good evening, Dinky Doo. This is Justin Brazil. And Justin, we're not going to do the Charlie's Ant line are we? So there we are. The wonderful Susan Forrest watching Dinky Doo down in Lancashire. Mwah. Thomas Hamilton, I have shared. Thomas, you are a top man. Thank you for all your support over many, many years. 28 years of Scotty McClue next month. 30 years since I set up Centre Sound Radio, now Central FM, the third radio station for Central Scotland, still on air and successful to this day. That's 30 years coming up in about six weeks' time. It's incredible. Uh, imagine if Nicola Sturgeon had missed five COBRA meetings, delayed the warnings about COVID, spoke about herd immunity, shook hands with COVID patients, caught COVID, and then went away with her third third husband to recuperate. Westminster Unionists would demand her blood. Thoughts, folks, says Kareem. Well, yes, Kareem, but I mean, I think Westminster has to realise, although Scotland is smaller in population, it's a larger country, we think a lot bigger than uh, than they do in, uh, in, in uh, the South. And um, also, don't bite the hand that feeds you. That would be my message to Westminster. You know, if you want to keep Scotland all lovely and cuddly, let them keep their own money. That's the one. Now we are talking. Sean McIntyre's watching. Dinky Doo, Tony Mac. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome. It's amazing to see how strong people are. You always find it in the very worst of times. You find the very best in people. Yes, I would hope so. Uh, Gordon Robertson, you ought not to be uh, something in the peeing in the pHing in the hot tub. No, no, but you, you, the hot tub has a pH, Gordon. So there you are. So it's not nobody's peeing in it, it's pH-ing in it. Like you used to, do you remember the litmus paper in science in school? And you used to dip your litmus paper and you could tell what the uh, the pH was of something. Uh, was he lost, says Justin. Uh, 
Hi, Scotty. How are you? And when are you back on the radio? We don't know Scotty here, but I am in touch with some very, very senior radio people who are very excited. They understand my clue. My enemy in radio, unfortunately, is somebody who's the music producer, you know, the music controller, and their job is to put songs into the computer. And they get anxious when someone says, do you not fancy a talk show, get Scotty on? Oh, I wouldn't um, All that sort of nonsense. And, uh, you know, as I say, I had to actually go and explain to a guy once, and I got a three-year contract. Gary McClure, dinky-doo, Jonathan Welch, lovely to have you with us. I shared, says Thomas Thomas, you are a true loyal man. You're what they call a pike man. Kelvin Allen's watching, wonderful idea, says Denise D. Nelson. Of course, Denise, we've got to look after the Scottish people. We've got to um, get these things sorted. Scotty here says, my friend was a presenter on L107. Scott, I would know your friend. Uh, thanks for a shout out, Scotland's favourite guy, Andy the Butcher with you and the nation. Ah, Andy the Butcher, how fabulous are you? I love the Butcher. Fantastic. Gordon McAllister, dinky do. Uh, Frank Crombie's watching. Nice to have you with us, Frank, of course. Mark Hanlon, big thumbs up to you. Um, James Watrett's watching. Hello, James. John Marshall, lovely to have you with us. Um, God Robinson says, there's a boy in Fife. They must have got the electricity installed in Fife new. Electric light, fantastic. They love it. You can't stop them playing with it. Uh, David Diston, got to go now and have my din, Scotty. Bye. Bye, Jack. Lovely to see you. Thank you for your fabulous support. If you're up and about early tomorrow, join us at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning, weekday mornings. Have a lovely dinner, Jack, and take care. Top man, great lad. There we are. Kevin Stewart's watching. Our resident comedian, fantastic stand-up comedian. I used to be a stand-up comedian till I was asked to sit down. Uh, to answer Gordon Robertson, I think the west end of Glasgow is more like Edinburgh. I grew up in the south side and lived in the west end. I'm happy to be back in the south side, says Tony Mack. So there you are. Where is the true Glasgow, I say? Would it be the merchant city? Would it be the south side? Would it be Govan? Would it be Mary Hill? You know, where where is the true Glasgow? Jeff Bernstein's watching Dinky Do Jeff, Ivan Cohen, Danny McNeil, uh, Noggins Ritchie says hello Margaret Lull. Hello, Margaret Lull. Lovely to have you with us. I'm just gonna do a bit of sharing, guys. Let everybody know what's going on. Uh, where else should we share? Another page. We'll share to another page, won't we? We'll share to groups. It's all so exciting, all this sharing. Can you all do the same? Share, 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 share. What we used to do was have, um, we'd have 15 minute massive general share time just to get everybody out there. I think you'd be good in LBC, Scotty. Instead of uh, Farage, says Jeff Bernstein. Oh, Farage, poor Farage. Don't know where he is at the moment. I haven't seen him. Evening, Scotty. A fantastic week of shows. I listen. I listen to his show. Evening, Scotty. A fantastic week of shows. I reckon next week you'll double your viewing figures and let's hope to get you in the box very soon as the country needs you. Kenny Hyde, you say lovely things. I thank you. What a top man. I do actually genuinely believe this program should be on national commercial television. It's a bit difficult for them to get their head around it because they look for boxes to tick and McClue doesn't tick the boxes. You know what I mean? I just say uh, that's a one-off. I always remember saying to a top agent, I said, um, I'm just looking at all these managing directors with their big cars. Should I become a managing director again? And he said, Scotty, managing directors are ten a penny. There's only one of you. 
What a lovely thing to say, though, eh? What about that? Um, so there we are. Uh, why are they allowing flights into London Airport every day and not doing any checks on them? Straight through customs, possibly spreading the virus, says Tony. Aha, Tony. Stephen McGuigan. Uh, I'm watching from a tent in Western Australia. Stephen McGuigan, we've got to do you. We've got to do you the hat. You can't be on a tent in West Australia, and we haven't done you the hat. Yay! Fair dinkum, buddy. Great to have you. From Oz in your tent. Okay, you watch out for the dingoes. Watch out for the roos, the wallabies, the duck-billed platypus, the, uh, what else have we got? Oh, there must be some more things. Wonderful. And uh, Stephen McGuigan, I, I salute you, dinky, dinky do, fair dinkum, excellent stuff. So there we are. We've got the hat on. If you're from Australia, you get the hat. No problem. Quick change act. Oh, yes. I was years in pantomime. I can change quickly, you see. Uh, wonderful. Gavin E. McVickers watching. Dinky do, Gavin. Lovely to have you with us. What a top name. Uh, the McVickers, the sons of the eagle. Do you know that? So there you are. From uh, South Uist originally, I think, the Sons of the Eagle, Mac a vicar. Um, Stephen Minnie is watching. Dinky do, Stephen. Lovely to have you with us in Dinky do. True Glasgow is Govan and the Gorbals, says Kareem. Are we correct, everybody? Govan and the Gorbals, right? I need to share this. This is absolutely massive. Um, the world's top talk show. Scotty McClure, global radio and television producer. That's me. There we are. Wonderful stuff. Off we jolly well go. Tell 10 to tell 10. More sharing, guys. We need these numbers up. Scotty here, I think you should start your own radio station. Do you know, Scott, I've thought about it. A one-person talk station. And we're on at certain times that everybody knows. Everybody comes and joins us, and it would probably attract a fair bit of advertising because people know what they're getting. And if you think about it, I mean, you know, I have joined radio stations that really weren't doing very much business, and we've turned them around. Fantastic. Um, so there we are. So maybe I should start my own radio station. Um, hello, Scotty Dinky Doo. The only trouble is, if you go into business, and I have, as you know, started radio stations before, and the second you go into business, your phone starts to ring, and it's all people wanting something. And when I say people wanting something, I'm not talking about presenters wanting a job in the radio. I'm talking about official government bodies. Are you registered with us? Ah, yes. And uh, the tax man's on right away now. Will you be a VAT registered? Blah, blah, blah. The whole thing, you know, customs and excise. Hello, would you like to buy answer phones? Would you like to buy stamping machines? Would you like us to supply your envelopes? We do office phone, we do chairs and tables. And it goes on like that. And you think, I have a job to do. I, I am setting up a new radio station for the centre of Scotland. And everybody's phoning me, asking me, do I want a stamping machine? And all that sort of stuff. Hello, Scotty, this is Tam Ramish, Dinky Doo, Phil Sam, Dinky Doo, Dave Anderson, Mark Hampshire, welcome, welcome, Carl Carlos Donnelly, Dinky Doo, Alistair Bajack, lovely to have you with us, you top man. Gordon Robertson, Partick is a rare bit of Glasgow too. Yes, I think Glasgow has sprawled and they feud, not feud, feud the West End. So where I used to stay in Mary Hill, opposite me, a lady used to visit me that had stayed there 50 years before. 
And she said, well, it's all the same. The trees aren't any high, and it's lovely to be back in the house and this sort of stuff. That was an old cottage over there. So she used to point out, and there was a farm and things like that. So there were farms out at Mary Hill. You had the canal. You had people on the canal. You had the canalers and the puffermen and the fishermen and every day going through the fourth and Clyde Canal. And I remember my father coming in a wee bit doon in the mouth. About 1963, I think it was, they said, they're shutting the fourth and Clyde Canal today. Remember that, 63. I could be a presenter, Scott here. I'm sure you could. You'll hear an audition I did in 1983 for BBC Scotland that posted it tonight. Share to my Facebook page, you top man. Andy Ray, I thank you. Graham Loudon's watching. Thank you, Graham. Lovely to have you with us. Let's get sharing to the big groups, guys. The big groups. Excellent stuff. And spread the word because a lot of people must be on Facebook. They used to join us on Nation Radio on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock on a little bit earlier. Dinky do, Scotty says, Carl, Carl, Stanley. Carl, Carl, Stanley, C. Lovely to have you with us. Bellissimo. Fantastic. I love the Carlos. Uh, you could do an internet only station, says Gordon Robertson. Yes, we could. I did that. I used to do it from Scotty McClue's website, www.scotty-mcclue.com. And uh, we also had our own forum. And then as social media picked up, it kind of took over. So I don't go live on the website at the moment. But the website's sitting there. Over 10 million people have visited it to date. And that just goes on. Scotty McClure is in his 28th year of presenting. Peter Conley, Dinky Doo, Darren Jackson, John Jones, Graham Campbell. Uh, I'd agree with Kareem about the Gorbals and Govan. I come from Gorbals. It's always been very multicultural, says Tony Mack. Of course it has. The Citizens Theatre as well. James Brady. All these wonderful actors down there, Duncan McCrae, um, Fulton Mackay, John McKerney, um, David, you know, David Heyman. Um, I'm trying to think Glenda Jackson was on at the Citizens, I'm pretty sure. They attracted all the big names down there. Uh, you know, that sort of thing, the old Harry McKelvey's um, Royal Princesses Theatre in the Gorbals. And the Sits is still a fabulous place to go. The wonderful Giles Havergill built it up. His father was the principal of the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. You know, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, but uh, Glasgow, that's what I was going to say to you, has been feud. And it, it goes out and out and out, all its little tentacles, you know. So, was I mean, Rutherglen was a royal borough. Paisley, a royal borough. Renfrew, a royal borough. Prince Charles is Baron Renfrew, you see. Fantastic stuff. Uh, so there you are. So these are different places. Glasgow, the banks of the Molen Diner. Fifty years ago on my story of Scotland, I called it the Molenden or Bun. <laughs> Do you know what the locals in Mary Hill call the Fourth and Clyde Canal? Is it polite, Gordon Robertson? Uh, there seems to be a lot of digital stations nowadays. Would that not be easier? Uh, Tony, I don't know. You see, I think digital has come a little bit late to the table. Radio-wise, there's something very exciting. This is what I got interrupted the other day. You'll find we go off on tangents on these programs. But uh, I got interrupted the other day because I was explaining that radio is um, a microphone, a transmitter, and a receiver. The airways do the rest. That's why the British Broadcasting Company had to be set up after the First World War because the government right, usual stuff, started to panic that this thing was massive and they wanted to try and control it. So that's why you need a license to broadcast. And uh, the whole thing about it is if you think the human being transmits, talks, receives eardrums, that sort of thing through the ear, all right, FM, line of sight. So 
in theory, if you could see from, let's pick one of the big hills in Glasgow, if you could see from Gilmer Hill, where Glasgow University is, across to Castle Milk, and you had a, even a low-powered FM transmitter, you'd get heard. That sort of thing. It's fantastic. And um, that's why Marconi was just so excited when he saw that handkerchief drop and they could be heard. But digital has been around a long time and it's been kicked around like a bit of a football. It was very good when it first came in, but it must have been around now 30 years and it's just beginning to get introduced on a larger level, do you know what I mean? Because I think they'd probably want to sell off the frequencies for phones and things like that. Just been listening to a couple of your difficult callers. The man from Lancashire and the closet gay says Wayne Watson. We've got some beauties on there. There's a YouTube called Scotty McClue talks to a man with nothing to say. This guy phoned me and he kept going on and hadn't really got anything to say. Very, very interesting, you know. And do you notice that if somebody wants to ask Scotty McClue about a problem, they very often come on and say they've got a friend. You know, it's a bit like somebody phoning the doctor and saying, I've got a friend who's got a, a wee problem, you know. And that sort of stuff, they think, oh, it's yourself. Uh, Russell, Dinky Do, Russell Adams, Robert Patterson, Rab Hill, all these wonderful people watching right now, Wayne Watson. Uh, so there we are. God, I've missed those days still. How fantastic is that? So there we are. We're getting so many interesting people popping up here, guys. Fantastic. Lovely, lovely to talk to you. Uh, Peter Conley, Dinky Do, Scotty. What about the huts at Carbeth? I drove down there last year and walked across the road to where the hut people created a swimming pool. You can still see it. People of Glasgow loved it. I'll tell you where else there are huts. If you take the old Caron Road, is it the Caron Road? Is it the Tacme Dune Road? No, the Tacme Dune Road's the other one. If you take the old road over to Stirling and come in at Charters Hall, Halfway up, you've got, I'm sure it's the River Carron, and there's huts. Wonderful. Uh, Paisley isn't a royal borough. Gordon Robertson, wash out your mouth and go away and uh, do some more research and listen to my Scotland's story. So there you are, Paisley, very much a royal borough. Paisley, Paisley Abbey was set up by uh, Walter uh, you know, Fitz, was it Walter Fitz Allen, who was the high steward of Scotland, so he became known as Walter Stewart, and he was married to Marjorie Bruce. So there you are. Bruce, get it? Bruce, yes, Robert the Bruce. So there we are. Good evening, Scotty. All right, Scotty, hope you're well. John Harding, what a top man. John Harding, one of our finest broadcasters. Now, John Harding, you're a man that knows about digital radio. You should Skype me and tell the nation all about it. That's fantastic. John Harding actually owns a digital radio station, and it's huge, massive. I uh, was actually on it. Great Yorkshire Radio. So, John Harding, if you want to Skype me on Scotty Dot McClue. I would love to hear from you and we could have a bit of serious chat. So there are excuse me a second. Comfort break. Woo! It's roasting. And of course, the warm weather's coming in. There we go. Yes. Back good as new. I think I might actually be a racehorse. John Marshall, tell ten, tell ten, tell ten. I see the media referring to Leith, the People's Republic of Leith, for the first time just a few days ago. Wayne Watson, very, very interesting. The Leithers, now the Leithers are very strong, that they're not Edinburgh people in the same way Salford people are very strong, that they're not Manx. Did you know Dumbarton was the ancient capital of Strathclyde? Yes, I did, Peter Connolly. But how fantastic of you to bring that up. And then, of course, we had uh, Dalriada 
Holdarieda, and uh, Kenneth MacAlpin was the king. So you had all these old Scottish kingdoms. The wonderful Violet Tulloch is watching, perhaps one of the most talented ladies I've ever heard. A top, top pianist, and just lovely to have you with us, Violet, and uh, so good to catch up on all the news about Willie Hunter. And I've posted something, I don't know if it's been loaded up yet, but I've posted something on um, the doctor's we bit there at the bottom and just talked about uh, my own background in music and how privileged I've been. And I've played your stuff on numerous occasions on the radio, accompanying Willie Hunter. Fantastic. Uh, Mary Hillfolk, call the canal the Nolly, and it's not rude. Now, Gordon Robertson, I can tell you something here. Um... There used to be steamships on the Forth and Clyde Canal. So if you came up Garioch Road to where it joins Mary Hill Road at the barracks, and I think if you just kind of, I seem to remember, the old sailor's home was across the road, but I seem to remember if you just kind of nipped up there at the back of McClellan Rubber and the canals there, the Gypsy Queen used to leave there for Kirkintilloch. Cruise ships on the Forth and Clyde Canal. How good is that? Um, so there we are. I'm surprised you're still alive after that dinner. McFoy put down at you, Erin. Oh, John's talking to somebody else. Sorry, John. We're giving out your conversation here. That's right. We'll just use Scottish show to have a good chat. I don't mind. Uh, Glasgow's great, but the Kingdom of Fife is amazing, Scotty. I come from the home of some amazing people. Adam Smith, Robert Nairn, Wraith Rovers. Wraith's a nice chap. I met him once. Ah, oh, they'll be dancing in the streets of Wraith tonight. <laughs> Wraith Rovers. Now, can I tell you that, and of course, Jimmy Shand. Let's not forget the Laird of Ochtermachte. Jimmy Shand from Fife. Five. He was originally from East Weems. So there we are. He was a, a mining laddie. Um, I think the Gorbals got his name from the Gory Bells. I believe it was a place for people with leprosy and you had to ring a bell to get into the area. Well, the lepers probably had bells on as well to warn people. Hospital Street is where the leprosy hospital was. Tony Mac, we still have leprosy with us. Um, please, anyone correct me if I'm wrong, Tony Mac. Why would you ever be wrong? I think it's, it's a very, very rare occasion I've ever heard of you being wrong. And I've been good enough to correct you, if you were. And it's always something very minor. Gemma Ann Marie McCray. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Scotty McClue's YouTube, uh, Scotty McClue's broadcast on Facebook Live and on YouTube as well. Dinky do. Hope you're well, Scotty. Great to see you. John Harding, we are indeed. And if you ever want to Skype, John, you'd be very welcome. We would love to have you on here and hear your chat. You are a real top man. I hope things are going well for you. And the other John as well. Gemma Ann Marie McRae, good evening. I hope you're well. Keep safe. Thank you, Gemma Ann Marie McRae. We must get you back on. Paul Callahan, dinky do, lovely to have you with us. I'll be in touch. Yes, do, John Harding. Always lovely to hear you. Um, do you agree there are hidden agendas with certain mainstream broadcasters? Propaganda-ish. Also, I feel the media, especially... Um, Something news, we shan't mention it. Uh, reinforce discrimination of minorities. Well, you see, what I think actually happened, when John Reith had the BBC, right? Now, John Reith was with the BBC from 1922 until was it 1935, all right? And then he left in 1935. Uh, and we're never sure if he resigned or if people maneuvered him out of it so he could do other top jobs. He ran, uh, you know, Imperial Airways and um, what else did he run? Oh, huge industrial. John Reith was basically an industrialist at heart. Wonderful character, wonderful man 
dreadful father and husband, but a wonderful, uh, industrious, wonderful, efficient and effective character. And um, very kind of single-minded. And he could have set the standards for the BBC in terms of high standards, religious broadcasting, music, news. And their first big hazard, their first run-in with the government was the general strike in 1926 when the BBC was four years old. Churchill wanted to broadcast and he wanted, uh, he, he tried to give John Reith a hundred pounds of his own money. He said, I'll give you a hundred pounds if you let me broadcast. And Reith said, the BBC is not for sale. He was very, very, very non greedy. That's the interesting thing about him. He wouldn't even take shares in Radio Times when it was huge. You imagine there was only BBC Radio. That was your only big broadcast outlet. And this was a kind of game of ping pong with the government. Who is in charge of the BBC? Now, the charter says that the governors of the BBC, or whatever, what is it they're calling themselves now? They've got a new name, anyway. But they were the governors. They're effectively still the governors of the BBC. All right? And uh, they are the board of the BBC. And back and forward, the governors are appointed by the Queen on the advice of the Prime Minister. So there is scope for popping somebody in there who's kind of politically in line with the, uh, with the, with the government line, right? So that's what you've got there now. Back and forward it went from 1922 until the Iraq war. What was that? What was that? 2002, 2004, whatever. And Downing Street forced the issue. And Downing Street broke the BBC. The board scattered. The uh, director general, the chairman, forced to resign. All that sort of stuff. Because... Downing Street had to get their message out there. So that was a bit of a problem there. And that kind of just broke the impasse, you know, because I believe to be effective in government, you need to have a very strong opposition nipping at your heels. To have the public service broadcaster employing 27,000 people, the envy of the world as a public service broadcaster taking on the government and saying, we will tell the truth. So, you know, make sure you, uh, you are always true to what you're doing here, and, you know, and to have that broken. So you need a very strong media and you'll get strong government. That's the thing. And you must have that freedom of the press. Uh, so there we are. And remember, I mean, I've been chased and harried and all the rest of it by the media for years and years and years, you know, 35 years of it. And um, I don't mind because I don't really have anything to hide. <laughs> so there you go. I don't even have any money to hide. Um, do you agree that there are hidden agendas? So... Um, I think, Wayne, in answer to your question, there could always be an agenda. But your best media, like I'm apolitical, I don't support one party over the other. You know, it's that sort of thing. So I'm apolitical. And over the years, the BBC has had fingers wagged at it, saying that they're broadcasting left-wing propaganda, that they're broadcasting right-wing propaganda, blah, blah, blah. I would say your problem that the BBC actually have is they're a bit hidebound with balance. They've got to balance everything to the extent that they can't just launch in. You're right, Scotty, the Fitzalans came over with William the Conqueror and ended up as kings and queens of the UK. Um, this is what I say. Most English people are either Italian or French or German. 
and they won't like that. And when we were having all those breaks at stuff, oh, the German, Germans, French, French, all that sort of stuff. If you're English, then you're going to be a mix of something from that. So there you are, because you had the Romans, Italy, Italy, fantastic, great influence. You had um, the um, Vikings, so they came in from uh, Norway. You had the Norman Conquest, the French, the Anglo-Saxons, England and Saxony in Germany. So, you know, just think on. Wonderful Stuart Logan. Good evening, Scotty. Hello, Stuart. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you with us. And dinky-doo, I say. Uh, no, we need a Stuart's inquiry, Scotty. I've checked this out. Paisley is not a royal borough. Renfrew is. Now, the boundary, what's the boundary, right? Is that then where you've got... Um, well, I'm pretty sure Paisley was a royal borough. Renfrew definitely is. I can tell you that. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And Renfrew, of course. Renfrew Shire used to take in, I mean, now you've got Inverclyde, you've got Renfrew, you've got East Renfrewshire. They were all under the same thing. They were Renfrewshire. Renfrewshire Education Committee, uh, you know, ran the schools right from uh, uh, all the way up, I suppose. Yes, from Inverkip all the way to the other side of Glasgow. There we are with the offices in Paisley. If you go to Paisley Abbey, you can see the different mark in all the stones. So there we are. It was the mark of the stone mason who laid it, and that's the way they got paid. Wow, Peter Connolly. Dean Park is watching, perhaps one of the finest entertainers we have. An absolute top man. I bless you, my dear fellow. And regards to your good lady, you are beautiful people, and you are an absolute top performer. A great radio man, great communicator, great singer, great comedian. Fantastic. There you are. So there we go. Um, how do Scotty and uh, the brothers from the Proclaimers? Well, there we are. Oh, how's the dog, Scotty? Yes. And the Proclaimers are brothers. Yes, absolutely. They are Craig and Charlie. Top people. I've met them. Very privileged. Very privileged to meet them. Uh, Finlay Morris, Dinky Do. Dinky Do, Finlay. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Scotty, did you ever build a bogey out of old pram wheels? Rab Hill. I had a cracker of a bogey. I also won a big scout bogey race from Tower Hill in Gurut, not for the faint hearted. And each scout troop had put in a bogey. And ours was fantastic. And um, what we had, we had uh, the four pram wheels, all the same size. I seem to remember, and my bogey was painted as an RAF staff car. So it was grey, and it even had steering. My father went down to his friend, the blacksmith, on a Saturday, and he welded us an angle that allowed it to be connected to the wheels, and the blacksmith was there, and he, he was on the huge anvil doing some stuff, and he said to my father, Hello, how are you getting on? You want that welded? Give us it here. Done. And that was me had the steering for my bogey. I also had foot brakes. Fantastic. Although you had to watch if you over if you overdid it on the gradient. <laughs> there we are. Just wondering if Mary Hill and Bella Houston are named after famous women. They are. Mary Hill was the daughter of one of the mine owners. Mary Hill was a mining area. And Mary Hill, <coughs> don't worry about the cough, had it for 20 years, was the daughter of one of the mine owners, I think. Bella Houston, I'm not quite so sure. Um, Bella Houston House, <coughs> pardon me, I'll have a sip of the water. It's all the talking. Oh, that's lovely. 
Now, guys, don't forget we pop up live at 10 o'clock sharp every weekday morning during the lockdown. So come in and join us. 40,000 have seen these shows. It's fantastic. It looks like small numbers when you look up here. But uh, although we do need to get that up, that should be up into the hundreds. So come on, that's your job. Tell 10 to tell 10. Can you do a show in the Cumbernauld New Theatre? I'm sure I could, Gemma and Marie McRae. We'll have to wait till after the lockdown. Duncan Macron's watching. What a top man. Wonderful, wonderful musician. Lovely to have you with us. An absolute privilege, Duncan. I hope you're well. And I say to you, dinky-doo. You and I uh, met 30 years ago in a few weeks' time. Andy Ray, sad the virus has got the Lynx market, Scotland's oldest and biggest fair mind, saving up and going when we were kids. All families would go with their parents. Brilliant times. So there we are. So tell us more about the Lynx market, Andy Ray. Uh, Lisa Anderson, dinky do, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Gordon Robertson, okay, you're apolitical. But do you vote at elections? Yes, but I don't always vote the same way. So I'm not one of these people that go, oh, no, no, I'm kind of the one way, you know, my granny, my granny told me how to vote. So I decide on who's the best candidate and who's looking good at the time. But still apolitical. So nice try, though, Gordon. I like it. I like what you're at. Uh, good stuff. Tried to call McClure out on that one. Gordon Hadley, dinky-doo. I'm for Renfrew, says Graham Loudon. You have a lot to be proud of. Is it Renfrew that they've got McClue Road or McClue Place? Uh, there we are. Finley Morris, Scotty, can you give a shout-out to Davy Cook? So there we are. Um, yes, there we are. Davy Cook, dinky-doo, from Finley Morris. Um, Dean Park, fabulous, absolutely outstanding entertainer, wonderful man. Remember sitting in the Denny Theatre in Dumbarton and we had an evening with Dean Park and it was just fabulous, wonderful. The BBC has to find a way to become commercial as times have moved forward since the TV licence was introduced. I don't think we should be paying the BBC any monies for the TV licence. TV licence should be... Um, TV license should be for infrastructure such as universal access to the internet, vital for education, for example. There are issues now due to the COVID-19 with kids falling behind in years of educational attainment due to not having access to internet. Government needs to review priorities. Well, in fairness, they're not falling years behind. It's just been about a month, and a couple of weeks of that was the Easter holidays. So there we go. So let's keep it in proportion. But yes, the internet, yes, very much so. Should Edinburgh be the capital of Scotland, or should it be Glasgow? Well, Kareem, I was putting this out to the nation last week. Is it time to move the capital of Scotland? The capital of Scotland used to move all the time. Dunfermline was the capital of Scotland at one point. Trying to think where else was Dumbarton not the capital? Schoon up at Perth was the capital. Um, so they are. So perhaps we should still be moving it about and uh, and have different places. Norman Miller's watching, of course. Danad Fort in uh, Kilmartin in Argyle, up uh, by Loch Gilpid there. That's where the Scottish crowns of Dal the Scottish kings of Dalriada were crowned. Kenneth MacAlpin was it uh, around nine hundred? Wayne Watson, dinky do if you wish. Peter Connolly, welcome, welcome. It's a thought. Do you know the biggest postcode area in Scotland is the PA postcode? It covers all the islands up the west coast of Scotland. Yes, because I can remember when it was Strathclyde Police, and that covered the islands. They'd taken in the old Argyll County Police, Dumbarton Constabulary, Greenock uh, Police, um, Renfrew and Butte Constabulary. All these things had been... Um, put into the one group, Strathclyde Police. I think Strathclyde was actually 
a very successful experiment. I don't know why they broke it up. Did anybody know? Because it was very good. So things like education and policing. And uh, I remember hearing some guy had taken over as a senior police officer and said, I think the inspectors or the sergeants should be looking at the constable's notebooks maybe every two or three hours or something like that. And this guy was saying, how can you check notebooks when they're on another island? <laughs> so midnight and a Friday night, you know, somebody is going, um, right, I'm in Oban, but I'll just make my way to, to um, Salon and have a look at the constable's notebook. Because they'd obviously seen people walking about Glasgow and thinking, well, the sergeant and inspector can get hold of that too before they go on the back shift. Did you know the biggest post in a good area? I do PA. I've stayed in PA. Uh, what are we going to do? Put bottles of famous, uh, put bottles of famous finger on the back of our currencies. Famous finger. Don't quite follow you there, Wayne. I think you might have been the victim of predictive text. Uh, Scotty McClure, could you play a song, please? Ah, Kareem, yes, we need a song, don't we? What shall we have? Uh, yes. We need a, oh, gosh, look at the time. A quick song. All right, I'll have to set up the pipe organ. Fantastic, the pipe organ. Right, here we go. A song on the pipe organ, Kareem. Yes, a Sunday night one, do you want a wee, a wee hymn or something like that? Yes, see what we've got for you. Um, right. number for you just to finish off our wonderful Sunday night broadcast what a cracker it's been as well Eddie Doyle dinky do thank you Kareem for reminding me Scotty did you see my post about the way Paisley Abbey was built I did Peter Connolly I read it out to the nation Royston Mills watching one of the finest producers I've ever heard of Welcome, sir. Wayne Watson, I'll put my cards on the table since my tutor converted me. I'm now a socialist bordering progressive communism. Might even start my own party. Wayne, I can't think there's very much progressive about communism, I have to say. It's been around a long time and it hasn't really gone anywhere. And somebody once described communism to me they said if you had two houses would you let me live in one yes if you had two cars would you let me drive one yes yes i would excellent uh, if you had two shots would you let me wear one uh, no because i've got two shots just a thought interesting isn't it william o'neill dinky do just heading off to bed, says Tony Mac. Great show. Stay safe and take care. And Tony, if you're up and about, join us tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock sharp and throughout the week. I'm forecasting a vaccine by the end of the year 2020. What do you think, my man, Scotty Dinky Doola? Frank Crombie. I've, I've been thinking to myself, should I be working on a vaccine? You know, it's a thought, isn't it? Putting my my big brain into finding a vaccine. Imagine I came up with that. You say, I'll tell you, Scotty McClure's got a vaccine. How good would that be? It was the media that said months could equate to years. I was initially confused. But there must be a reason why they said that. It was worrying. Yes, Wayne Watson. Um, Lynx market first started in 1304. 
Four minutes past one, shut at two o'clock. Sorry, I'll be teasing. It's built along the Esplanade in Kirkcaldy, which is a couple of miles long. The Langtoon. Am I right, the Langtoon? Yes, I know Kirkcaldy well. Love it. Started as a good market. Now it's the biggest fun fair. It lasts six days. I think I've seen it. I think I've been driving through Kirkcaldy and I've seen it. Um, so there we are. Uh, they disperse and set up all over Scotland and beyond. How fantastic. You do stay in a great place. The Langton, the home of Lino. We need more Lino from Kirkcaldy. Used to smell, didn't it? Yeah. Who are the, the linoleum? The linoleum. Lady McGuck is watching. Thank you, Lady. Lovely to have you with us. Ginger, says Wayne. Ah, the ginger, yes. Should bring the capital back to the kingdom, the kingdom of Fife. Bottles of ginger. Yes, predictive texting. The phone's conspiring against me. There's no a dry, in the, dry eye in the house now that you've played that, Scotty. God, well, is this, that's what you say. There's not a dry eye in the house. Sorry, my internet's been playing up. It froze. I missed it, says Peter Corley. No bother, Peter. James Sinclair Mitchell Gilroy is watching. Vaccine. I've got a belter, says <laughs> a vaccine. Henry the Hoover, a vaccine. Very good, Rab Hill. You have not lost your touch, Lala. Frank Crumbie must see what the brand seer said. Aye, the brand seer. A story to tell you. Remember the wonderful John Laurie and Dad's army. Did ever tell you the story of the old empty? Bomb. Ugh, there was nothing in it. So there, <laughs> that was him. There we are. Wonderful stuff. Anyway, I'm going to have to dash. We are out of time. We're over time. We're in injury time, but we're actually in wellness time. Join me tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp. Until then, this is Scotty McClure saying dinky doo to every single one of you. Thanks for watching. Stay fabulous. Stay safe. Stay beautiful, and I'll catch you all during the week. Dinky do. You'll be away soon. Night night, Gordon Robertson. Bless you. Thank you. Take care, big man. Thank you, my darlings. Dinky do.